conference this afternoon is by Jason Sweeney and Ali from Sintestad uh, Peretano. We will speak of Beatrice Sweeney and we will talk about the paper. Thanks, Alberto. First, let me thank the organizing committee for inviting me. It is a pleasure to come back to Puerto Escondido. Okay, let me begin by telling you about the goals and results that I'm going to, to present. This talk is about, uh, in this talk, I plan to discuss certain connection between periodic string amplitudes and local zeta functions. Uh, local zeta functions come in many flavors. For instance, periodic, topological, motivic, etc. These objects are connected with number theory, algebra, geometry, singularity theory, and of course with mathematical physics. In, in this preprint, this is a recent preprint, which is already available at the archives, regularization of periodic string amplitudes and multivariate local zeta functions, we establish that the periodic Cova Nielsen string amplitudes are essentially finite, finite sums of Igus's local zeta functions or uh, local zeta functions of periodic type. By using this fact, we establish that these amplitudes are convergent integrals that admit metamorphic continuations as rational functions. Okay, this is very important. Oh, by the way, in this talk, P denotes a periodic number. Some physicists have conjectured that in the limit P approaches to one, the periodic string amplitudes approximate the classical strings. Okay. In the 90s, Jean Deneb and Francois Lesser established that the limit P approaches to one of Igusa's local zeta function gives rise to new objects. They call these objects topological zeta functions. By using the Neve-Lesser's theory of topological zeta functions, uh, we establish that the limit P approaches to one of the three-level periodic open string amplitudes gives rise to a new amplitude which we have called topological open string amplitudes. In, in, in this preprint, this preprint is not available at the archive, but we plan to upload it shortly. We establish that the Feynman amplitudes of the effective Lagrangian of the periodic strings are precisely the topological open string amplitudes. <coughs> My talk is based on a joint work with Miriam Bocardo Gaspar and Hugo Garcia Compea. Okay. The string theory was motivated by the need of understanding certain aspects of the strong interactions of elementary particles. These interactions are described by functions called scattering amplitudes. This function must satisfy certain mathematical and physical conditions. In the, this drawing shows an interaction of four particles, K1, K2, K3, and K4 are, are vectors, the, the momenta of the particles. Uh, these are vectors in, in, in a space of dimension 26. It, it was very difficult to construct uh, a scattering amplitudes. In, 19, in 1968, uh, Veneziano proposed the following function for describing the interaction of four particles. This is the Veneziano amplitude. This, uh, this function is, is a beta function. So this, this is the gamma, the standard gamma function. Alpha yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is a function that comes from experimental data. K1, K2, K3, K, K4 are the momenta. The square is, is, is the, denotes the, the, the Minkowski product. The importance of this, of this uh, function is that the asymptotics of this function matches the physical experiments. The Veneziano amplitude can be generalized to the case of uh, the scattering of particles. These are the momenta, and this amplitude has this form. Okay? In the case of four particles, this integral gives the, 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 the original Veneziano amplitude. One important thing is that this is a geometric object in the sense that uh, this object can be formulated on any local field. This means that we can replace R by the complex numbers or periodic numbers, etc. Okay, the convergence of these integrals is an open problem. This means that the, that the theoretical physicists use these uh, uh, integrals as formal objects. Uh, okay. Okay, let me recall to you that the field of periodic numbers denoted by QP is defined at the completion of the field of rational numbers with respect to the periodic norm. The periodic norm is defined in this way. 
any, any uh, non-zero rational number can be represented in a uniform as a power of p times a fraction. This gamma is uniquely defined, and by using gamma, the, the, the periodic norm is defined by this formula. Any periodic number, different from zero, admits an expansion of this form. In this expansion, the x, j are periodic uh, digits. A QP with the sum is a locally compact topological group. I'm going to denote by dx the hard measure, a hard measure on this group. OK. The periodic string theory started in the 80s with the, with the work of three groups, Volovich, Froen and Witten, and Franton and Okada. By the way, Igor Volovich is the, is the head of the uh, mathematical physics group at the Este Club Institute. OK. Uh, Okay, this is the, the definition of the periodic string amplitude for n particles. The, 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 the only modification, I mean, is just uh, to replace R by, by QP and use the, the, the right hard measure. If we introduce in this integral a test function, this function, in this case, a test function is a, is a locally constant function with compact support, then this object uh, becomes a local zeta function. And this local zeta function uh, had been studied intensively in the last 30 years. Okay. Ah, by the way, in this case, uh, it is known that this is a convergent integral uh, in, in, the, in, in these complex variables, okay? The convergence of the amplitudes or the local zeta function is, is, is related with the singularities of the integral. I already mentioned that in the limit p approaches to one, periodic strings, or periodic strings approximate ordinary strings. Uh, this um, idea has been discussed in several articles. Here you have two, two, two articles uh, discussing this, this calculation. OK. In this preprint, regularization of periodic string amplitudes and multivariate local zeta functions, we establish that the periodic Kovanilsen type amplitudes are bona fide integrals, are true integrals. We attach to these amplitudes Igusa type integrals depending on several complex parameters and show that these integrals are admit meromorphic continuations at rational functions. Then we use these functions to regularize Kovanilsen amplitudes. OK? So in order to, ex to, to explain this result, or these results, I need some notation. I'm going to denote by k an on Archimedean local field, which is, a, a, which is a locally compact topological field with respect to a non-discrete topology. This is the, 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 the norm. Any non-Archimedean local field of characteristic zero is, is a finite extension of QP. Rk is the unit ball. The unit ball can be described in terms of the, of, of the, of the norm by, by this formula. This ring contains a unique principal ideal, P, Pk. This ideal is formed by the, the non-units of R. And this is a description of the, of the ideal. I'm going to fix, oh, by the way, uh, K bar. K bar is the residual field, which is a finite field with Q elements. I'm going to fix a generator of, of P, pi. Then any element, non-zero element in K, can be represented as a power series in pi. Now the digits xi runs through S, where S is a subset of RK, which is mapped objectively into, into, into the residue field by the reduction mode of P. OK, uh, I'm going to denote by K sub E the unique and ramified extension of degree E of QP. Uh, this essentially means that the residual field of this of Ka is the finite field with p to the elements. Okay, this is the is, uh, the open string amplitude over this field. It's the same definition. We just change the field and the hard measure again. Ki is is a vector in a space of dimension 26, a complex vector in in, in a space of dimension 26. 
Uh, we, are, we use the Minkowski product, which is defined here. In addition, the, 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 the momenta vector satisfies certain algebraic uh, restrictions. For instance, this, 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 this restriction means that the momenta uh, are preserved uh, uh, during the interaction. Okay. In order to, to work with these integrals, it's better to change the notation a little bit. So I'm going to assume that this product is a complex number. I'm going to denote this product by x i j. Okay. The number of the, the i and j is exactly d. Uh, physicists use variables x2 to, a, to x n minus 2. Uh, I'm going to define this function. Okay. So, uh, we have to study this integral. This is the, the, the precise definition of the integral. We have to take out a certain divisor. This is the hard measure. And we call this integral the open string endpoint zeta function. Okay, in order to study this, this, this integral, we introduce sectors. So capital I is a subset of T. T is the set of labels of the variables from 2 to n minus 2. The sector I consists of the vectors such that the component I runs through the unit ball if and only if lowercase i belongs to capital I. So the, the, the sectors form a partition of, of the domain of integration, and this is the contribution of the sector. By using this partition, we decompose the, 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 the zeta function, the integral, as this sum. Then, by using change of variables, it is possible to show that each of, uh, uh, this integral is a product of two integrals. But the key point is that now these two integrals are non-Archimedean local zeta functions, which means essentially that uh, these are integrals over the unit ball. OK. Uh, then we, we establish that this integral admits this integral admits an analytic continuation to CD, denoted by the same symbol. This uh, analytic continuation is a rational function in these variables, and the real parts of the poles of these integrals belong to a finite union of hyperplanes. Now. Uh, uh, by using this integral, this, the, the, the metamorphic continuation of these integrals, we regularize the string amplitudes in this form. We define the string amplitudes as the specialization of, 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 of a parallel zeta function uh, when s i j equals this product. Okay? Then the string amplitudes are well defined rational functions in these variables, and these functions agree with the integrals used by the physicists when they converge. Uh, um, of course, this definition allowed us to recover all the calculations made by the physicists. Okay, now I'm gonna. The, the next step is to compute the limit when Q approaches to one in these integrals. Okay, in order to do this, I need some some ideas. I have to introduce some ideas about local zeta functions. So now K is a local field of characteristic zero. It is well known that K is an uh, Archimedean field. In this case, K is isomorphic to R or C. Or K is, is a non-Archimedean local field, which means that K is a finite extension of QP, the field of periodic numbers. I'm going to denote by D, calligraphic D, the C space of test functions in the Archimedean case. This is the space of a smooth functions with compact support. In the non-Archimedean K, this is the space of locally constant functions with compact support. OK. If f is a polynomial with coefficients in K and phi is a test function, then the local zeta function attached to this pair is this integral. In this uh, formula, S is a complex number satisfying this condition. This, e uh, uh, this integral converges in the half plane real of s greater than zero and defines a holomorphic function in, 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 the, in this half plane. By using Ironaka the singularization theorem, one shows, or it's possible to show, that this integral admits a metamorphic continuation to the whole complex plane. Okay? 
In the periodic case, by using in Uraka the, singularis the singularization theory, Igusa established in the 70s this result. The periodic local theta function is a rational function in the variable t, uh, p minus x. The, the poles, uh, the poles, the possible poles, have this form. The important thing is that this collection of numbers, this collection of numbers is called the numerical uh, data of, 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 of an embedded, sorry, this, this collection of pairs is the numerical data of an embedded resolution of singularities of the device attached to F. Igusa local set of functions are, are, are related with uh, arithmetic objects. Uh, more precisely, Igusa set of functions are related to the number of solution of polynomial congruences mod modulo PM and exponential sums mod PM. There are several intriguing connections within topology of complex singularities. For instance, this is the monodromy conjecture. This is a central conjecture in this theory. Suppose that F is a polynomial with coefficients in Q. Then, for P big enough, if S is a pole of the metamorphic continuation of this local theta function, then exponential 2 pi i, real power of x, is an eigenvalue of the local monodromy of F at any complex point of this hypersurface. This is a very difficult conjecture connecting topology and arithmetic. Okay, oh, really I need uh, local theta functions depending on several polynomials and several variables but I prefer to, to discuss the results in the case R equals one. Okay. The idea is to compute a limit. Then a natural question is uh, if there is an explicit formula for this integral. Okay. So if phi is the characteristic function of the unit ball, I'm going to use this simplified notation. In this case, under suitable condition, it is possible to find an explicit formula for this integral. More pres okay, uh, let me recall this. If, if the cardinality of the residue field is q to the a, then the local theta function is a rational function with numerator and denominator in this ring. And there is a finite order, uh, there is a finite set of pairs of integers which can be chosen independent of k, such that the denominator has as a possible factors uh, these, these polynomials. Okay, this is uh, the explicit formula. Suppose that W is a subset of Rn, which is the union of cosets mod Pn. Now uh, we define this integral, the integral of W. If Z is an skin defined over K, the, the NCL denotes the L rational points of C. This is the theorem due to Jean Denet. Suppose that F is, is a polynomial with coefficients in R, such that the reduction modulo the maximal ideal of R is different from zero. Now D is the, is the divisor attached to, to F. Su suppose that this divisor has a resolution of singularities with, with good reduction modulo P. This is a technical condition, but this is a generic condition. Now, the pre-image of D is a union of uh, finite numbers of uh, closed subvarieties, smooth closed subvarieties of, uh, of one. To each uh, exceptional divisor, we attach a pair of numbers, Ni and Vi. Ni is defined by this formula, and the Vi is defined by this formula. Uh, this is the the divisor attached to a differential, uh, to a top differential form in the, in Kn. Okay. Then this is the explicit formula for the local theta function. So the, 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 this integral is controlled by geometric data. Okay, geometric data and by some arithmetic data. These numbers in I and Vi uh, come from, a from, a, from any embedded resolution of singularities of the divisor F, and these numbers uh, contain these numbers contain uh, arithmetic information. More precisely, uh, Cj is the number of rational points of a variety defined of Fq. Okay. Now the topological theta functions. Now I'm going to suppose that F is a, is a polynomial with complex coefficients. Y h is a resolution of singularities of this divisor. The pre-image of D is a finite union of, 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 of sectional divisors. 
Again, to each divisor, we attach a pair of numbers in I and VI. Now, uh, we define these uh, varieties. The point is that uh, these uh, EI circle varieties form an stratification of the, of the space uh, Y. Okay. Chi V denotes the Euler characteristic of the set of rational points of the, of, the, of, of the C rational points of B. Okay. So this is the topological theta function. Okay. The point is that this, uh, this is a rational function, but this function depends on, on a particular embedded resolution of the divisor uh, attached to F. The point is that in arbitrary dimension, it is not possible to, to choose a canonical resolution of singularities. Then it is necessary to show that this definition is independent of the resolution of singularities chosen. Okay? It's a remarkable fact that the above definition doesn't depend on the chosen resolution. Before the introduction of motivic integration, the proof of this fact used local zeta functions. The topological zeta function is obtained by taking the limit p approaches to one of the piari de Gusa zeta function. This is the idea. Suppose that f has coefficient on a number field f by using the explicit formula for, for this integral where w is the characteristic function of the ring of integers of this local field, then for almost all p, now in this case p is a, is a maximal ideal in, in the ring of integers of, of, of the field f, then the topological zeta function is the limit e approaches to zero of these integers. The point is that the limit p approaches to one of this integral is equivalent, quotation marks, to the computation of the limit e approaches to zero of this integral. Okay. Now, uh, I already mentioned that the string uh, that the string amplitudes or the or the, of the or the corresponding local zeta function is essentially a finite sum of uh, local zeta functions. By using the, the, the Nebuliser theory, we can define the limit E approaches to zero here and the limit E approaches to zero here. Then we can define a topological zeta function by this formula. We call this object the topological open string endpoint zeta functions. Okay, so this is a result, the, topologi the topological open string endpoint zeta function is a rational function uh, in the variables is i, j. In addition, the real parts of the possible poles belong to a finite union of hyperplanes. Now, we define the topological open string amplitude as the specialization of this integral when xj equals this Minkowski product. Now, the, the, the topological street amplitudes are the Feynman amplitudes of the, of the Lagrangian introduced by <coughs> Kerasimov and Chastabili in this article. Okay? Let me just say that the natural way of constructing this object is, is, is by using motivic integration. But the point is that we don't know physical interpretation of the motivic string amplitudes. For this reason, we, we prefer you know, to, to, do, to, to do the calculation over the PRX. But the next step is to construct the, the motivic string amplitudes and try to find a physical interpretation of these objects. Thanks for your kind attention. I did it in 30 minutes. Exactly. Perfect timing. Thank you very much. You're welcome.